This week on RUTV, it's Studio Takeover with Second Period. We're bringing you a special look at some hidden gems here on campus. And later, we'll test some tasty drinks before hitting the ice. So stay tuned, because it all starts right now on RUTV. Morning Seahawks. Today is Friday, February 11th. I'm Grace Carroll. And I'm Taylor Roth. Welcome to the first official RUTV Studio Takeover of the 2022 year. If you look familiar, it's because we've anchored once before. But this week, we've given the main broadcast a well-deserved break by completely running the show. Ooh, I feel like I can use a break. Getting these broadcasts out is no joke. That's for sure. And hey, you're in luck because I know the perfect place we can go to relax just down the hall. Oh yeah, you're right. The Wellness Center. I totally forgot how convenient it is to get there. So why don't we go check it out right now to let everyone see what it's all about. Sounds good to me, and I'm sure Ms. Andrews has lots of information to share with our fellow Seahawks. Vamanos. Hi, my name is Rachel Andrews, and I'm the wellness counselor at Redondo Union High School. So as the wellness counselor, I see students individually and also in groups, run different programs to help support students with their overall health and mental health and well-being. For students who aren't sure to come, I would say come and look at this space. Uh, we've got a really nice area where you can just relax and hang out. Um, we've got tea and coffee and hot cocoa, bottles of water, sometimes snacks, also phone chargers. The general environment at the Wellness Center is very calm and peaceful and very accepting and safe. So really people from all walks of life, whoever you are, um, you're welcome here where you can come and just relax um, and be yourself. And there's no expectations, um, there's no judgment. You can just be who you are. You don't have to worry when you're in this space about um, like homework and all these other things. You can just come and exist. The Wellness Center is important for students because uh, mental health amongst our students has really, really gone down in the last few years, mainly because of COVID, but it just in general overall. Um, and at the same time, awareness about mental health needs has gone up. Having a space on campus that specifically supports student mental health and then having therapists, counselors, and professionals there for students is really one of the most criti critical aspects because the whole point of education is to be successful in your life and to really learn who you are. And without that piece, um, I think a lot of people get lost and sometimes it takes them a lot longer to get to that space where they're successful, where they're happy, where they have like the meaning that they really, really, really crave. Um, and so having this on campus, I think, is what just what students need. It's not just about like academics, right? It's about who you are as a person. So, so far we've done a few different things. We've had a yoga instructor come to campus on some different Wednesdays to provide um, yoga. We've also had a nutritionist who's also a counselor come to talk about nutrition and mental health and how what you eat and what you drink can actually boost your mood or reduce your anxiety or improve your focus, which is really cool. We've also had a poetry slam, which was really aimed at people who've experienced any type of sexual discrimination, harassment, or assault. And it was a very powerful and moving poetry slam. We're hoping to have more of those. Also have a guys group going on right now. We have a stress management drop-in group that's um, starting that anyone can come. It's on Mondays. And we also have attendance group for anyone who's kind of struggling to get to school. They know they need to be here, but it's just impossible to leave the house. Then we have more workshops coming up. So um, listen to the announcements. Of course, I went to UCSB. Go Gautos. Woohoo! And I got my degree in psychology and my minor in ethnomusicology. And then I went on to Loyola Marymount University to get my degree in counseling, my master's degree in counseling, by way of working in the prison system. So I worked in the federal prison system for three years. So I worked in the drug and alcohol rehab unit, and I also worked in the behavior modification unit. But the whole point of it was, honestly, when I was working there, I just felt like so many missed opportunities happen in so many of these people's lives. Here they are, like a life sentence, right? They're never getting out of prison. And I felt like, like where were the people when this person was young, like to help kind of guide them away from this lifestyle or away from this pathway? 
So that's what motivated me to become a school counselor. So I went to LMU um, and got my master's degree in counseling. In order to become a therapist, you have to do 3,600 hours of supervised therapy. So that took a while. And then I got my license. I take three different exams. And then I worked at Paris Middle School from uh, 2007 all the way until last year when the COVID funding came in for a mental health position at the high school. And I was like, this is it, like this is it. <laughs> like We've got to do this, we've got to make this stick. So I was just really motivated to come up to the high school because of all the students that I know at Paris. I was like, well, I already know like a thousand people at least up there. And so it'll make the transition a little bit easier. I'll get to see a lot of familiar faces. And so I had talked to Breedy about this being sort of like a dream position and like, here it is. So I'm here to help you know people individually, but also to really have like a whole program for everyone. So if you're coming from the top of campus or the administration building, you walk from the admin building down the stairs, straight past the bingo room, and then onto this little bridge that goes over an area that has a little bit of trash in it sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, you go over this little bridge into the CTE building, and then it's the first door on the left and it has a wreath on it, so it's easy to spot. If you're coming from the south end of campus or from the library, um, then you would walk up, you would see the hundreds building on your left, then you would see the CTE building on your left, which has journalism, culinary arts, RUTV, media arts, digital photography, web design, and you would walk down the hallway, you'd turn right where the bathrooms are, and keep walking, you'll go outside into an area that's like a rooftop but also has um, handrails and then you walk along until you see the wreath on the right hand side and that's how you get to the wellness center. This upcoming week should be an interesting one in the world of entertainment with the highly anticipated Uncharted movie starring the likes of Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg scheduled to be released next Friday the 18th. However, this weekend, the only thing on many people's minds is the 56th annual Super Bowl taking place here in Los Angeles where the LA Rams will play the Cincinnati Bengals in what should be an exciting game for all the football fans here at home. California knows how to party with what's sure to be an epic halftime show featuring Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Mary J, Blige, and Kendrick Lamar. But you don't need to hear it from us, so let's go now to Trey and Jacob with an update on everything sports. Welcome back to RUTV Sports. I'm Jacob Hatfield. And I'm Trey Dawson. After the recent surge in COVID-19 cases here at RUHS, our Seahawk athletes have finally gotten back off the bench just in time for spring sports to start up. Last Friday, our girls basketball ended the regular season in a close win, beating Costa 39-37. Morgan Edwards and Ella Zimmerman led the way with 28 combined points. They ended up placing third in Bay League and now move on to the first round of CIF playoffs. They play Linwood tomorrow night at 7. Good luck, girls. Boys basketball also ended the regular season last Friday with the loss to Costa, 48-59. Our boys finished the regular season with a 13-11 record. Senior Bradley Bennett led the team in points per game, averaging 19.5 and, and also averaging a team high of 3 assists per game. Junior Cole Stokes led the team in rebounds with 9 per game and blocks with 2 per game. They play their first round of CIF playoffs tonight against Cajon at 7. Good luck, boys. Girls soccer also had an incredible season so far with a record of 12-1. First round of CIF starts tomorrow with a home game against Lakewood at 5. Come support our girls. Boys soccer faces off tonight at home versus Catella in the first round of CIF playoffs. Games start at 5. They're sporting an 11-5-2 season record. It's shaping up to be a good matchup for our boys going into playoffs come out to show your support. In wrestling, boys varsity took first place at league finals last Saturday. All 12 varsity boys qualified for CIF at Etowana High School this weekend in hopes of qualifying for masters. Our girls wrestling individuals are today and tomorrow at San Dimas. Our girls start CIF. Best of luck, girls. Girls water polo secured third place in Bay League with their win against Penn, beating them 9-5. Offense did a great job with goals from multiple players. Goalkeeper Stavi had a couple of nice saves. 
Their season ended yesterday with a tough loss, 15 to seven, against Woodrow Wilson. Great season, girls. Our rugby team has kept its successful season alive with a clean sweep, going three and zero in last week's tournament, beating Murrieta Valley, LA International, and the Ponies, Costa, boosting their overall record to 13 and one. Senior Devin McDonough earned the man of the match with an outstanding performance, scoring a total of six tries on the day. The next tournament is tomorrow in Poway. Go get them, gents. Girls flag football has gained a lot of traction recently for their successful performance. The team was invited to SoFi Stadium, where quarterback Jenna Anglin was interviewed at NFL Network. We're joined by Jonathan Franklin, Rams Director of Social Justice and Football Development, and Jenna Anglin, my QB, QB. the QB for the Redondo hey. Seahawks. All right. What do you think when you see how much flag is really opening up to girls at the collegiate level now? I definitely think that there are women out there that should be in that collegiate level for women's flag football. The goal is to make girls flag football a CIF sanctioned sport. On Sunday, the girls played championship games against Losinger, beating them twice, and then played Lawndale High, where they won 28 to six. Samantha Cost scored three touchdowns, and Journey was untouchable with her speed and agility. We sent Tyler Noda down to interview the girls after the game. Go! We won! We won! What's up? What's up? This Redondo! We won! Amazing game today. Amazing. You scored how many touchdowns? Uh, I think through this game. Through <laughs> this game. How shocked are you right now? Because this is really huge. Um, I am, I don't know how to say it. I'm on adrenaline, adrenaline right now <laughs> from my catches. I wasn't expecting to catch those, but I did it and I'm proud of myself. Their next game is the League of Champions final at LA Convention Center this Saturday. Well, that's all for sports this week. Keep up the great work, athletes, and we'll see you all next time. Go, Go Seahawks! Seahawks. Thanks guys, now Seahawks, if you ask, you shall receive. So second period is spicing up a couple of RUTV's most requested segments from our 2021 viewers survey that the students just couldn't seem to get enough of. First up is a boba tea sampling that is definitely not similar to Tasty Time at all. So let's just roll a clip. Welcome to Food Hunters. On this episode of Food Hunters, we're gonna be boba tasting. We're gonna get their best like blended drink, like a smoothie or a slush, and then their best tea, both with boba. Let's, so let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Taylor, you're still not out of frame. <laughs> so we thought the uh, honey boba had was like open, but it's closed. It's closed, so we're it's so going to <laughs> <laughs> Our blended drink, we have the strawberry Yakult. 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 It's not in your normal like clear cup, but there is boba in there and it's strawberry, so we're gonna taste it and once we taste it, we'll bust open the top so we can look inside. Yeah. That's really good. What the heck? That's so good. I have so much boba in my mouth right now. <laughs> this is the classic milk tea boba drink. They're number one on their menu. And I'm pretty sure these are the golden boba, not like the classic black tapioca ones. So let's I'm give excited. it a go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can never go wrong with like a classic, like just milk. It's, it's milk and black, and it's delicious. I rate this one an eight out of 10. I like it a lot, but. I'm gonna go okay. nine out of 10 on that one for this you. This one's really good, actually. It's like a strawberry limeade drink, almost. I'm gonna it's give this one really a 10 good. out of 10. I'm giving it's it a 10 really out of 10, good. It's really good. It's really, really good. Even so if we can't pronounce it. This one. All right. Cheers. Ooh. Now on to the next. Mm -hmm. That was really good. Here we have an avocado smoothie with boba, 100% uh, sugar, and <laughs> And then this one is a signature fruit tea with the black tapioca pearls. I like that, it's really subtle. They've got like stuff in there with the boba that are like these sugar crystals, but like passion fruit flavor, they're so good. Wow, but I don't want to like put it on the table. Actually, I'm not gonna drink it. It's already so. on the it's table. It's a freaking trash can over here. Well, I <laughs> That was a 
Was it good? Was it good, Taylor? Taylor's just dumb. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's start with let's start with the avocado smoothie. So get that one. This one? It's not super sweet, which if you don't like things that are sweet, then you would like this. I give it a seven out of ten. I'm gonna be brutally honest. It tastes like one of those green smoothies that my mom makes me at home. And I don't like them. <laughs> So I give it a five out of ten. I really like this one. I like things that are sweet. This one's pretty sweet, and I'm also a big fan of teas, so it's really good. And I think the crystals just add like this extra texture. That's yeah. I rate this one a nine out of ten. Um, six out of seven out of ten. You go like this, and then and then I go. Punch it down where your way to. Oh, it works. Oh. That went a lot better than I thought it was gonna go. <laughs> We're back! And we went to two different boba places. Ding tea and presso tea. What was your favorite, Grace? I gotta go with ding tea. Same for me. We'll have to do this again, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No more boba tea. Bye! Taylor would like me to remind everyone once again that the Food Hunter segment is completely unique from Tasting Time and that's final. Thank you very much. Okay, circling back to what's going on around campus, this week, RUTV is shedding a spotlight on an incredible figure skater who is working to help get others involved in the sport. So let's go take a look. I'm Rin, I'm a junior at Redondo Union, and I figure skate. I got into skating, like, elementary school. Well, I was born in San Francisco, and so I used to skate there in 2010, and then I moved to Redondo Beach, found an ice rink, skated here, PB, but then I kind of didn't like practicing, so I quit after two years just came back in 2017 and now I practice consistently anywhere I can. I practice stretching. I try to stretch every day, some stamina, sometimes strength. I have really weak arms. Every day is like day for me. <laughs> so yeah, it's just flexibility, strength, endurance. My favorite tricks are any jumps. I'm more of a jumping person than a spinning person. I like toe jumps specifically when you're jumping off of the toe pick of the ice skate versus just a full on edge flat footed. I had my first friendly like home ring competition at this ring, PV, and I got first, but it was just me and a friend competing in the division, but it was still fun. I hope to be a coach when I become 18, because right now I legally cannot be a coach at 16. I hope to have competed a bit, maybe even dabbled in Disney on Ice, something like that. The job at the rink is basically just renting out the skates, Maybe even cashier, I usually clean on my downtime and when there's public skates, I skate around and make sure people are being safe and respecting the environment. So the flyer that I shared on my social media is if you bring your student ID that shows you're a high schooler, in February, every Tuesday, you'll get a discount for skating, which means admission is $9.50 and skate rental is only $6. So versus $19 that you would usually spend at the rink, it becomes a total of 15 I think it's a shame that RUHS does not offer figure skating at school. I know it's hard to fund because skates are expensive and that skating times are expensive, but it'd be really nice because it's not a popular sport, but I feel like with more attention, it could really grow into something beautiful. People should give ice skating a shot, even if it's like intimidating. I feel like the reward outweighs the risk. It's so awesome to learn more about our fellow Seahawks and see how they're making a difference in the community. Speaking of which, the Beach Buddies Club is planning a beach cleanup tomorrow morning from 10 a.m. to noon on the south side of Manhattan Beach. Gloves and trash bags will be provided. So to learn more, join the Google Classroom code EZY56A7 or find them, find them on Instagram for more details. Hey Seahawks, today is the last day to enter submissions to compete in the Redondo's Battle of the Bands competition with the possibility of winning a $100 prize. There is an informational meeting later today in the ASB room that you won't want to miss, and all musicians should be prepared to turn in demos through the Google form which can be found in your school email. Calling all artists. There are not one, but two art contests going on right now. The Rotary Club of Redondo Beach and the Congressional Art Competition are both accepting submissions in the mediums of painting, drawing, photography, and digital media. Please email Ms. Roth to get your applications. If you are looking for great ways to gain community service hours and are free this Sunday the 13th between the hours of 12 and 4, the South Bay Parkley Conservatory is once again looking for volunteers to help around Hopkins Wilderness Park. 
Check your school email to sign up and contact Michael Lee Chang with any questions. Seahawks, get excited for the first dance of 2022, Redondo Union Spring Formal. Be ready to experience a night on the water on the USS Iowa. Spring Formal will be on March 12th from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. and ticket sales start next week at $70 with an ASB sticker and $75 without. The price will increase each week after, so make sure to buy yours soon on the ASB web store or at the finance office. Check out at Sammy Seahawk on Instagram for more information and updates. Also, stop by Smashburger next Wednesday, February 16th to support the freshman class fundraiser. The restaurant will not be accepting online orders, but you can visit the Class of 2025 Instagram page for a flyer to show in store. Finally, are you interested in joining a team, collaborating in a school-wide project, working behind or in front of the cameras? Then you should apply to join RUTV. Applications can be found on your school email or on the RUTV Instagram or website. Well, Seahawks, that's all for this week's broadcast. I'm Taylor Roth. And I'm Grace Carroll. We hope you have a happy Valentine's Day, and we'll see you again soon. So don't forget... Keep on loving, Seahawks!